Foster, they're probably gonna take him away. It's not fair, you know? I mean, he was only protecting his property like a good watchdog should. Ah, uh -huh. they won't take him away, pal. Look at his record now. One more misstep and he's tossed in the pound. Well, then we'll just bust him out, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very heavy reading here, gumdrop. What? Oh, no, Dad, those are mine. Sly and I are doing a little research. Oh, well, that's industrious. What's the subject? Well, you guys, they're worms. To Sly and me, they represent profit. As in monetary profit? We're going into business, Father. Worm farming. Worm, worm farming. farming. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's very easy. It's simple. All you need is a lidded plastic container, shredded newspaper, and about 200 worms. And garbage. Yeah. And in about six months, you'll have 25,000 worms. Which is about enough to process 84 pounds of kitchen scraps a week. Or the output of about 16 family kitchens. Which means we can assemble 15 extra Mother Nature's own garbage disposals. With worms, containers, and bedding. Yeah, and we'll sell them to 15 lucky Port Charles homes, and they can use the worm processed material for mulch. That's your genes talking, hon. Me? You're the bug woman. You're the one that sent them to the library to look up insects. But you're the hustler. This isn't hustling, Mom. This is a legitimate business. Worms are God's answer to what do we do with the landfills? Yeah, we're saving the environment. We're helping to, anyway. Yeah, did you know... Well, good for you. Did you know that worms are a really good source of protein? Stop, Lucky. <sighs> Honey, look. You and Sly can uh, farm these worms if you like, and we'll even give you a spot in the basement. It has to be in a cold place where the temperature is regulated. Fine, whatever you want. But please, no more talk about worms as a source of protein, okay? Don't okay. even think about that. Okay. No, please, let me. <laughs> Hello. Miss Spencer, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Please, come in. Thanks. Well, Justice, what's up? Does it feel kind of funny to be here? <laughs> Different, but good, good. Yeah, well... I know you didn't just come out here for a stroll down memory lane. No, I didn't. Commissioner Donnelly paid a visit to my grandmother today. As part of the investigation, he and Detective Garcia asked her a lot of questions about people who knew my father. Any surprises? Well, possibly not to you. Seems that Jack Bolin and Edward Quartermain were definitely on the scene when my father was running into resistance to a lot of his initiatives. In the other camp. Well, it's no surprise there. It was the airport development deal was one of the central issues. So, why would those two old robber barons and Lee Baldwin take the time to pay respects to a man who gave him so much grief? Exactly what I was thinking when I called you. Mm. I would like the chance to see them up close, personally. I think that can be arranged. You in the mood for a little poker game? Tonight? <laughs> I love poker chips. I'm so patriotic. Make me want to stand up and salute, especially when they're all piled up in front of me. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, don't drag dirt in, okay? Because we're going to have company soon. I'll be careful. Thank you. You want me to guess which one of our neighbors is missing a fence? None of them. I bought this uh, wood from the lumber yard. That practically emptied his bank account, doing it, too. For lumber? What's the matter with you? We could have stolen that for nothing. Yep, I didn't just have to buy wood. I had to buy worms, too. You're buying worms? You're paying good cash for worms? Go dig a hole in the yard. Sweetheart, he needed 200 of them for breeding. I think I saw that many clustered in a big slimy ball, having a, an orgy in the rose garden. No offense, Dan, but uh, business has never been your strong suit. Are you sure he's mine? Close enough. Well, you know, the only reason I'm letting him do this is so that he can support us while we're still young enough to enjoy it. 
You know, the truth be known, I, I, I am not that uh, crazy about the idea of having those squiggly little creatures living down in our basement. Honey, if your skin's crawling now, wait till you see the squiggly little creatures gathered around this table playing cards later. Well, since you've mentioned it, just what exactly do you and Justice hope to accomplish tonight? See, what Justice has been missing is an up-close look at the crowd that hated his father the most. This time he saw what his old man was up against. But do you really think that's an accurate picture? It's been an awfully long time. The Ed Quartermains of this world don't change, Gumdrop. Yes, Edward Quartermain has a reputation, but party to murder or even conspiracy to cover up murder, I think that's a stretch. You're too generous. Steve Hardy? Come on, Luke. I'll bet you that Steve Hardy never even had a parking ticket. Yeah, you're too generous. But you're probably right about Steve. He's as close to a saint as I ever want to get. What about Lee? I like Lee. And his wife, Hill has always been very special to me. Well, I know, sweetheart, but uh, that doesn't mean he couldn't have made some bad choices in his life. And then there's Jack Boland. What about him? I don't know much about him, but he seems nice enough. He seems nice enough, yeah. But he's also very good friends with Lee and Edward and Steve. And don't forget, these guys were the power brokers here in Port Chuckles 20 years ago, just like they are now. And also don't forget that in those days, Frank Smith was openly doing business with all the power brokers in town, including these guys. There's a point. Yeah. Anyway, card game is a real good place to get insight into a man or a woman. Jin! I think I know who committed the murder. Who? Oh. Miss Scarlet, in the library, with the poker. <laughs> you get it? Poker! <laughs> well. Don't you get it? <gasps> Five cards in. She's pregnant. <sighs>